are sealed subwoofers more musical than ported subwoofers? That's the question we're going to be answering in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Della Sala with Audioholics. And I want to answer a question that I get all the time. As you guys may know, I do some private consulting online. Um, if, if anybody wants to revamp their home theaters, I offer a service where I will consult with you. So the question I get asked more, I would probably say about 60% of the time when people are choosing equipment, they always say, are sealed subs more musical than ported subs? I want to have the best musical experience, so I don't want to have a ported sub. And that always kind of irks me because, in my opinion, that's an old uh, myth that needs to be busted. I know we've talked about this in many live streams in the past, probably went really technical above people's heads. I'm going to try to keep this really simple and really short. I'm going to tell you guys that you cannot judge the musicality of a subwoofer based on how it's whether it's vented or whether it's sealed. There are good and bad designs and sealed, and there are good and bad designs on ported subwoofers. But I, I was thinking about it the other day as I was calibrating my speaker system in my new theater room. Over here, you can see I've got the RBH SVTRS in our new theater room. As I was calibrating this system, when, when I first fired it up, things didn't sound very tight to me. You know, the speakers sounded a little boomy. And if I was looking at the measurements and I saw how much gain I had at the very low frequencies in that room, because I have so many subwoofers and the standing waves are just killing me at the listening area. This is very evident. If you're sitting towards the back of the room, you get a lot of uh, reinforcement at the very low frequencies, like in the 20 to 30 Hertz range. When you have a subwoofer with lots of piston area, especially if it's a ported design, that amplifies that gain even more, and it gives you that perception of slow or loose bass. And I think that is why many people have this misconception that sealed subs are always more musical than ported subwoofers. So if you look at this response of an SVS sub, this is basically a PB4000. This is the response when it's ported. This is the response when it's sealed. You could see in the 20 to 30 hertz range in the ported mode, there's a lot more output here. Now, this is an anechoic measurement. So if you, if you stick this in the corner of a room and you sit towards the back of the room, you're going to get a lot of amplification in this area from the room gain, from the standing waves, that you, you get more gain there than you would out of an equivalent sealed model here. And that is why I think people often think that ported subs are slow or they're sloppy. I think in many cases, people don't have good modal control in their room. They, they don't take advantage of multi-sub. They don't take advantage of EQ. And when you get too much bass in certain frequencies, especially if it's a big bump in that area, it becomes very audibly boomy or annoying. And before I even get more detailed about this, I just want to show you guys for, for those that are casual viewers and don't know what I'm talking about, a sealed versus a ported subwoofer. This is, again, an SVS sub. This is a uh, ported sub. It's got two vents in the front, and this is a sealed sub. So that's really the difference in how the base is being aligned in the cabinet that I wanted to show you. So we can measure whether or not a subwoofer is, quote, fast or slow. And as a measurement, if you look at any of the measurements that we do on all the subwoofers we review, there's a measurement called group delay. And here you have an example of a ported subwoofer. This, is this represents one cycle of group delay. This represents 1.5 cycles. And it's generally agreed upon by most audio um, engineers that you want to keep the base, the group delay, up really below about a cycle and a half. A cycle at higher frequencies and a cycle and a half at very low frequencies because as you go down in frequencies, just the nature of how bass works in small rooms, you do generally get more group delay. Things technically are slower, if you will, because of the longer wavelengths. But this is an example of a ported subwoofer. You can see it's tuned at around 25 hertz. This is where the peak is. And you can see it's under a cycle and a half. And over here, it's way below a cycle. And over here, it's below a cycle as well, below the venting frequency. So that's very typical behavior of a ported subwoofer. And this is an example of a well-designed subwoofer. So in addition to the room gain issue that I was talking about and how ported subs often give you more output at the lower frequencies than sealed equivalent, 
there's other factors that can make a ported sub sound not musical. And that's in when a subwoofer is not behaving properly. If it's not tuned well, if, they, if there's a really high resonant peak at its tuning frequency, that could be a problem. It would show up in the group delay. Or if the port is chuffing, if there's just not enough port volume to, to, um, to basically reinforce the bass frequencies you're trying to play, the chuffing can be very audible as well. So you do have to be careful. You do have to have a well-designed ported subwoofer, but there's absolutely no reason why you can't have good musicality with ported subwoofers versus sealed subwoofers. Now, I'm sure some of you are probably asking, why would I choose a sealed sub over a ported sub when obviously, you know, apples to apples comparisons, you tend to get more low frequency output out of a ported sub. Well, you look at this example here, a ported sub tends to be very large. It's very difficult to put a single large subwoofer like this in most people's rooms because of the aesthetic factor. It's a struggle when I consult um, just how to get two subwoofers in a room and, and not you know piss off the significant other or the wife or whatever. So in many cases, people can't do a big uh, ported subwoofer, so they go for the sealed one. And there's advantages to that. The advantage here is if you put two small sealed subwoofers in a room, even though they're not co-located, at the very low frequencies, you still get a low frequency coupling factor below about 30 hertz or so. So getting two smaller sealed subs like this in a room versus one large sub, you can get virtually almost the amount, uh, same amount of low frequency bass playing from these two subs versus this one larger sub but you get the benefit of multi-sub. And the advantages of multi-sub when you have two subwoofers properly placed in a room is your seat to seat consistency is better. And what that means is when you sit from one seat to the other, the bass sounds more similar than it doesn't if you just have one sub. And why you want seat to seat consistency is obvious. You wanna have all your seats to have good bass, but it also makes EQ far more effective See, if you have only one subwoofer and you EQ out a big bump, generally speaking, it's only going to benefit that one area if that bump isn't at the other seats. But if you get multi-sub in a room and you get the measurements very similar from seat to seat, then when you fix that one seat where that has the big 25 hertz bump or a big 40 hertz bump, it'll fix the other seats as well. So what I want to do for you guys in a separate video from this is I'm going to give you kind of a case study of my theater room that I just set up because when I set this system up originally, it was a little bit boomy and it was because I just did not have a flat linear frequency response. It wasn't until I added the rear sub behind me and then I got things properly time aligned and I did some positional EQ by moving my chairs and then I finally did electronic EQ that I got things sounding really tight and fast and musical. And people coming in this room, when they hear the bass in this room, it's it's really the best experience they've ever heard in bass. It blows away anyone's misconceptions that you can't have musical subs if they're ported because that's simply not true. So I hope you guys found this information useful. I'm kind of curious as to what do you think about sealed versus ported subs? Do you have a preference? Maybe did this video kind of open your eyes to the fact that maybe some misconceptions about these different subwoofers, maybe you can get good musicality out of a ported subwoofer if it's properly set up right. I want to hear your comments down below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. You get direct access to us so you can ask questions or suggest video topics. And we also, of course, appreciate the support so we can continue to make more videos and produce more content that you guys want to see. So I think that's a wrap. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.